1950 Zenith portable tube radio. I believe this is a model G503 chassis 5G41. It's from the research I did looking at these on the internet. There's several different ones and I believe this is the right chassis based on the tube layout and the number of tubes. I think they call this the holiday or the tip top. And this is going to be a resurrection because this is a sort of a beat down uh, junker. It is a Zenith though. So this would have been your portable camping take to the on the boat radio in 1950. And the dial cord is broken there obviously. Looking in the back, all of the tubes are gone. The plug for the batteries has been cut off. This would have had a bad A and B battery that went down here. I don't know what the hell this is. Did someone peel the zip cord apart just to be cool or something? This is a three gang tuning cap, so it has a tuned RF front end. 1U4, 1L6. So, 1L6 is one of the most expensive kind of generic radio tubes out there because they're scarce and the Transoceanics use them. It can be substituted at lower frequencies with a 1R5 or using a 1LA6 Loctal with an adapter. And there was a guy that used to sell the adapters. I don't know if he's still around. I don't think that would fit in here because of the, the size constraints of that IF transformer and that metal bracket. But we want to go through and test everything before we do anything with this because the last set I had that I worked on uh, that looked like this had bad transformers, and that's why it was condemned. Oftentimes when repairing or restoring or resurrecting something, mistakes are made and they can be costly. And this video is a good example of that. Just don't take anything I say as uh, accurate unless you get to my conclusions, because part of what really led me down uh, the rabbit hole on this one was some bad information that didn't really apply to this specific situation. So this is a tough one and this one kind of ate me up in several ways. So it's a long video and uh, there's a lot of discovery and knowledge to be learned from this video. I might actually revisit this radio someday in the future as a DX test out in the desert. I think there's a lot of potential there and I think it'd be fun to run this thing on batteries but we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Enjoy the video. There's a switch in here and what you do to put this in battery mode you push this into here I think. Something like that. We'll look at it when we get it open, but that switch activates this battery connector. And if we can resurrect this, we'll take it out to the desert and see how it performs. You know, I, I never thought Zenith did kind of frivolous stuff like this. This is, I mean, I kind of understand the point of it, but it adds a lot of complexity and unreliability into the function of the radio. So first thing we're going to do is get it apart and start checking stuff and then move on from there. So I guess the antenna is in in here. So this 
the tuning part still works. It's just the there's another string for the this display indicator. But yeah, it looks like the antenna is probably inside this thing. I don't know, could we glue that back together? Probably. Let's take a look under here. Oh boy. Waxtastic. Candome resistor right there. Uh, this is that switch. That uh, puts it in uh, battery mode. Freaking uh, cord is like off of a coffee maker or something like a 10 gauge cord. Selenium rectifier. They should make Febreze with burning selenium rectifier scent. So let's start testing stuff here. And the first thing we will do is this is going to be a shaky video so get your Dramamine out uh we're going to put music into here from something i don't know what yet but just so this red and blue wire just so we can see if the speaker and audio output transformer are good i'm just feeding out of my old phone that still has a connector into this thing and Uh, it's not driving it with very much power, but... Uh, output of the phone's probably half a volt into the primary of a very high impedance transformer. It's going directly into the speaker. It sounds okay. I think we're okay here. Checking some of these resistors, you know, they like to go open on these radios, and this looks right. Don't do that to me. Come on. Play nice. And so that's the double 960 there, but what I'm really interested in is this. What the hell is going on here? Is that not drawn right? How is the line? How is the line going through a 0.06 capacitor to ground? That would not work. So what am I missing here? Something's not This is not right. But those two resistors are good. And then they go to a 150. Oh, I see that right there is a selenium rectifier. I thought that was a battery. Sorry, me stupid. So yeah, that's your bypass capacitor to ground that 0.05, which is that big thing that's dripping wax. So okay, all right. What's not right is me brain. So you can see these are all 10% resistors because either the filament droppers, and that's highly critical. So you can't just swap this out for a silicon diode on one of these uh, without redoing your resistors you'd have to you'd have to figure out this resistor would have to go up in value if you were going to go selenium with this and that's what a 150 i need a better resolution schematic well that's this asbestos sand resistor here that comes right off the selenium and it's measuring 134 I have transformer one, or I don't know which way I'm going, 23 ohms, coil two, 25 ohms, next I have transformer, 25 ohms, and the other coil in that I have transformer, 23.7 ohms. Now, these can have silver mica disease, unfortunately these have built-in capacitors. 
Well, I think we're looking kind of promising here. I'm not finding anything wrong yet. I'm not finding a deal killer. Uh, this is the power switch, and obviously when you flip this up, it turns the power on, and this also looks like it's a pretty heavy spring. It also looks like this is probably what originally gave this the detent to hold this open. So I don't know if it's on right now or not. This already looks like somebody tried to glue this together. This is all like vulcanized. See how it's all melted. Where did the uh, where did the co the tuning cord go in? Does it go in through this hole? Does it run alongside the the antenna wire? Geez, Zenith, this is kind of gimmicky. So just to clear this right now, this is not going to be a, a restoration like the internet would like it to be because this is like a fifty dollar radio on eBay. It's not a not a big price getter, and um, with this broken and this broken and the dial cord, I'm not going to fix any of that. We're going to electrically get it to work as good as possible. And then we'll take it out. We'll see if we could get it to run on batteries. And we'll take it out to the desert and see how it performs. I did verify this switch is in the on position. I'm going to power it up with no tubes. We should be able to sort of reform the electrolytic that way, I'm thinking. Um, I'm going to use the smallest light bulb I have. I'm only going to do this for a minute. I'm going to watch the voltage here. And we'll see what happens okay here we go Ooh. why is it humming with no tubes in it well we definitely have bad electrolytics it's it's humming with no tubes in it Just for fun, let's do this. Just going to do this all in one take. I'm going to just take and short this. Uh, I could just short it to here. So that'll turn that light bulb on. And then let's see what is the wattage of that light bulb. That light bulb is 6 watts. So, I should put a note, I should write that on top of that light bulb. So that's a 6 watt bulb. We only got, well, the voltage is coming up a little bit. Maybe I'll just give it a few minutes to reform. I wonder why it's buzzing though. It should be open circuit, right? See what I mean? So the positive comes up to the red there, goes to the red on the transformer. And without the tube in there, it should be totally open. Unless that 005 capacitor is just so damn leaky. Which I guess that's possible. Because that goes one side of that goes to ground, right? I don't know, these radios have a very manipulated, yeah, it does go to ground. So maybe this wax capacitor here, C13, has gotten so leaky. Wow. Connected to the main B plus on the filter capacitor, I got uh, 31 volts AC and... 77 volts DC that electrolytic is garbage one other thing I want to check here which is the antenna which is measuring one point I don't know if that 
it's this. Where's the bad? Doesn't look like there's any opens in this wiring. So uh, everything, I think we're okay. Uh, it definitely needs capacitors, but that's no surprise. Uh, it's going to be a very minimal recap just to get it to work. But the next step is to go through and find a set of tubes for it. So we need two 1U4 tubes. Those, that's your RF amp and your IF amp. 1L6, we're going to use a 1R5. It should work fine in just an AM broadcast receiver. They work okay in uh, transoceanics, but not on the higher shortwave bands. Then we need a 3V4, that's the audio output, and a 1S5. I don't know what that is. It's probably the detector and first audio amp. So uh, I have a bunch of these in a bag. We're going to just have to start testing tubes. These are all 1 volt radio tubes. So to go through, and I don't expect... I don't expect all of them to be good, but to go through and test test them and find a set for this thing. Hopefully we can find some good ones here. 1U4, 1R5, 1S5, right? Is that what this was? 1S5. And I found 1-3V4. This is the audio output. Uh, a note on these tubes that sometimes the numbers on these are on the top. So just note that. They're not always on the side. A lot of times they're on the top. I'm going to make an assumption here. Well, this is a fact. These are directly heated cathode uh, tubes. And the filaments are on 1 and 7 in most of these. And I'm going to assume that the majority of failure with these is going to be an open filament because I doubt or they got air in them but I doubt most people ran the life out of these I could be wrong so I'm gonna quick check a bunch of them just like this and then we'll put them in the tester okay okay well here's the first one that's open okay here's the second one that's open here's the third one that's open So straight off test. These were the two open filament 1S5s. I had four 1U4s that were open. The majority of the 1R5s were open. These were the only good 1R5s. I don't know why there so many of those died, but um, maybe there's a capacitor or something that goes leaky in the circuit. I need to look at that. And the good thing is the 3V4 is got a good filament. And I verified, I went and I wire brushed the leads and I double checked and they are definitely bad. So I'm not making a mistake here. We'll do the Color Royale uh, tube tester. So X and Z, I got it set up. It's kind of lazy. Uh, let's try this one here. X and Z. That one's kind of good. Uh, let's try this one here. And I cleaned all these pins off. X and Z. That one's kind of dead. Eh, it's coming up. And it looks like we have a good 3V4 audio output tube. Make happy, very sunshine. Here's our nice set with the pins all nice and clean and shiny. So all we need to do is populate these and then replace the capacitors and we should be able to listen to prostate service commercials, right? 
And isn't that what AM radio is all about? 1R5, I'm still, this is going to be the curious part right here. Um, will this work okay? Because like I said, the 1L6 is a very pricey tube. 1S5. That is our detector and first audio. It's a dual element tube. So when the getter is almost gone, 1U4. We'll make that one our RF amp, our front end amp, since this is a three gang tuning sinkler. And we have another. Had to be a 1U4. I must have rubbed the. Doing a little bit more analysis here. Uh, this thing has a bunch of those crap resistors with the uh, that are like two pieces sandwiched together. See right here. See the lines. These. This one too. See the lines where it's two pieces put together. This one is not. But there's a bunch of these high-value resistors. Same thing with this one right here. A bunch of these high-value resistors that are the crappy, crappy kind that always are way out of value. Like these definitely are. See how they're round on the end? It's, it's not a hard cut. Like see, this is a real hard cut. These are more roundish right here. These resistors are probably all bad. They're probably all way out of spec. Yeah, this is one too. These are... Uh, there is a capacitor. I was noting how so many of the filaments were blown out on the 1R5s. There is a capacitor, which is this capacitor right here, that is connected from the filament to ground. So if that capacitor was to short, it could cause a lot of current flow through that filament. All these capacitors need to be changed, but I'm just curious to check a couple of them with the cap tester. And I want to clarify this if you're not familiar with these type of radios or these type of tubes, these battery radios that use these one volt tubes that are use a directly heated cathode, which means that the filament is the cathode itself. They are extremely delicate and because the cathode is directly heated part of the filament, it's part of the circuit. So it's not, you don't just have a string of heaters in series or in parallel. It's actually got resistors and capacitors that make those part of the circuit. It's actually a pretty ingenious design if you look at how it's all tied together. So that's why I'm being extra careful with this. So I'm going to snip a few of these and we'll, we'll just check them just for the the uh, entertainment value. I'm sure they're all Clarko twerfulated, but I still want to I still want to just get a couple of them out of circuit and test them. Okay, here's the first one cut out of circuit. This is the one that could damage the filament in the 1R5. So we're on 50 volts here. It's what I expected. Leakier than a twink on Epstein Island. Okay, time for excuses. Don't really care about that one because it simply grounds the antenna coil. Don't care about that one because it goes from the chassis can to the capacitor ground. Uh, don't care about this one. It's a cathode bypass. It's got a low value resistor in see it under there in parallel with it this is the this disc is the cathode coupling to the audio output so that's a good thing 
these three might need to be replaced. I'm still looking at where those are in the circuit. I'm cutting them out because I got to do the electrolytic and I, I need access to the bottom of the electrolytic and I can't get it with these big honking things underneath here. Came across one previous something here. See this J-hook situation and this kind of dark resistor. What's interesting is it doesn't look like it's been replaced on the other side. It's hard to tell. Uh, I want to check out what that's for. I'm, I'm recapping here. I've started putting new capacitors in just sort of temporarily. Uh, like I said, this is not going to be a restore for long-term use. This is more of a resurrection because of how beat up and broken and cracked the plastic stuff is. But... I want to investigate this. Shaky, shaky. That burnt resistor connects to pin 5 right there, which is the center tap of the two filaments. And it is that resistor right there, R12, and I can't really read that. 680 maybe? 660? And here it looks like violet, yellow, brown, or black. And it measures a 1.7K. Uh, none of this makes sense. I need a clearer schematic. Well, this is a better schematic. Can you say anything more digital? I mean, that is just like... A visual representation of digital PDF files right there. So what is that? 660 ohms? I don't know. Okay, here's the riders. Uh, this is way better, isn't it? Is that 680? All right, well, I don't have any paper manuals. I might have the SAMs, but it would take a lot of digging to find. It's in SAMs 99. Um, I don't have the riders up past 20, and this is in riders 21 as far as the paper copies. And this is a problem with digital crap, but this looks to me like 740 ohms, which I've never even heard of a 740 ohm resistor, but violet yellow brown and it looks like the schematics of 680 and this is measuring 1.7k so this needs to be changed and i'm thinking of just going with a 680 i got a 680 in there and i replaced that capacitor that was very leaky and here's the resistor I took out this is definitely a 740 it's one of those crappy ones uh, that you know go way up in value there's a bunch of those in here and I noticed that oh and this one was measuring what 1800 uh, and I noticed that this broke this is the antenna wire so I saw the other side down in here so this is a very high use set not that that's not a good thing. Someone got their money's worth out of it, but it's just making it more challenging to get going. Like I said, it's not really worth not really worth just buy another one off eBay for fifty bucks and do it all from the scratch. Okay, these tubes are one point four volts at fifty milliamps. I want to put the capacitors in it, and then I want to bring it up slow, bring it up light, maybe on a light bulb, maybe on a variac, maybe on both. And, ooh, the mosquito is here. See the mosquito? Um, I want to check the voltage across each tube, the filament voltage. I'm very concerned about the filaments. Electrolytics or electrolyticing. So I say we plug it into that 6-watt bulb and just start checking filament voltages. Measure the drop across each tube. See what it is. Okay, here goes. 6-watt bulb should limit it to 60 milliamps, right? And the light bulb comes on now. 
very dim. Um, where's my meter at? I'm trying to do this all live in one take. So this is ground, very convenient. All right, here we go. So coming out of our selenium, we have 22 volts. Coming out of the resistor, the sand resistor, uh, that should be this capacitor right here. We have 18 volts on the filaments, which should be this big capacitor. We have 727 millivolts. I'm not quite sure how that's configured, but we are very low right now. Uh, 700 millivolts. So let's start measuring the voltage across the tubes, and I think we're going to need to go either get a variac or go up in, um, yeah, 21 volts is not nearly enough, I don't think. Let me cross this tube. We have uh, 009. It's not even uh, is that 90 microvolts. Across this one, we have the same thing. I don't think this is AC. This no, this is DC because they're getting this off the the B plus side. Well, this is interesting. Across this one, which is the 1U4, we're getting 346 millivolts. Okay, let's see what we're getting across the 3V4. Across the 3V4, we're getting nothing. And across the 1S4, we're getting 349 millivolts. So that's our 700 millivolts. But it's all being dumped across two of the tubes. That's what I was worried about. See, I bet if I bypass this light bulb, it would blow those tubes up. Well, this is interesting. If I pull the 1R5, 1L6 out, the light bulb almost goes completely out. See, so yeah, it's like it's driving all that power through that one tube. But it has no filament voltage across it, so I'm, I'm lost. Unless that tube is shorted internally. I brought the variable autoformer out and I'm measuring across that tube first which is the 1S5 and I've adjusted the autoformer variac and it looks like I'm at about 70 volts and I'm at 1 volt across the tube. Now these tubes I'm going up, these tubes are rated for 1.4 volts. Um, so measuring across that one I got well, let's just set it to a 1.1 volt. Battery is going dead in the camera. Okay. We have 1.1 volts across the second IF amp, or the IF amp, 1U4. We have nothing across the 3V4. We have uh, 0.12 across the first IF. We have 0.14 across the 1L6, 1R5. We have 2.1 across the filter, which would be the same as the sum of those two. So what the hell's going on here? Back to this, I took a little break and ate something and hopefully that regenerated some brain cells or something so I can figure this out. So what we got here and I'm not, I don't really understand what's going on with this. I don't understand this circuit. I need to print it out on paper, but I just, I don't, not, that date, not right now. So basically, these tubes should have 1.4 volts, 1.4 volts. This is 3 volts center tapped, uh, 1.4 volts, 1.4 volts. Uh, on these two tubes, we're getting excessive voltage on these tubes we're not getting any voltage on this tube we're not getting any voltage but if i pull one of these out then this voltage drops so something's out of balance here 
And like I said, it's not just as simple as a bunch of filaments in series, because the filaments are also part of the circuit. The electronic circuit is the cathode. So anyway, I'm doing a little bit of unconventional testing here. I got a 1.25 volt nickel metal cell there, and I'm testing the milliamps. So this one is drawing. These are supposed to be 50 milliamps, but... Um, I, this is only 1.25 volts, and this is supposed to be 1.4 volts. So this one's drawing 42 milliamps. I'm just going to test them and make sure uh, none of them are shorted. I have seen tube filaments that were shorted. A couple of the little zigzags were shorted together. And so the current draw went way up. The resistance went down. I've seen series string TVs where the CRT did that, and the CRT barely, barely lights up at all, the filament, but all the other filaments are normal, and you go and you do a direct current test like this, and the CRT needs 5 amps. It's just, it's shorted, the filament shorted. So, anyway, enough talking. 42 milliamps on this one. This is the 1R5. 41.3 milliamps on this one. This is the next 1U4, basically 40 milliamps on this one. This is a 1S5, basically 40 milliamps here. This is one section of the 3V4, uh, 42 milliamps. This is the other section, 40 milliamps. So my, they're probably actually dead on. It's these crappy clip leads. So it's not the tubes. We don't have a fault with the tubes. I just wanted to get that out of the way. So in this filament circuit, this is the 3V4. That's the center tap one. We have... Well, I guess we got to start down here. So if you follow through that switch... Well, we get another 680... So we got a 680 there, and then it comes up and it goes to this side of the filament, and then one the center of the filament comes to what I'm this resistor here, which I was thought was the 680, uh, which I replaced with a 680. I think it was a 740. Then I guess we got a 220 there. That point one, I changed that. And now two of these are getting power and two are not. So I think what we need to do, there's not a whole lot that could cause this. 180K is not going to do it. Here's another 220. Now that goes to the... See how confusing this thing is? Whoever designed these really was something special. So I think what, there's only a couple parts, unless I'm missing something, and I think we should just check them rather than try and actually understand how this circuit works because I'm too brain dead. I think we should check that 220, 10%. And we should check, uh, I'll admit, I did not remove it. So if it is shorted, which it was not, because I checked it, but this 200 section of the main filter here, that connects to the filament line. That is your filament uh, filter. Because if there's any hum on the filament, you'll hear it in the audio. The 220 ohm resistor is measuring 280. That's well outside of 10%. 10% would be 240. But I don't think that's causing this severe of a mismatch where we have zero volts on some and too much voltage on the others. Pretty wild. I have no idea what's going on with this thing. I'm just completely stumped. 
I checked the electrolytic. It is not shorted. I put 12 volts into it, measured it with a milliamp meter. There's no leakage. So I'm going to go up to an 11 watt bulb here. This I'm measuring across one of the two that's getting power. like a little bit more than that. Do I dare go up to a 25 watt? You know, the 25 watt lamp gives me one volt. Maybe I'm creating my own problem here. Maybe there is no issue with this radio. All right, let's see if we can get a visual representation of what's going on with this because I don't understand why when you pull these out, the bulb gets dimmer but yet there's no voltage across them. Am I not measuring it right or something? So let's see if we can see them glowing. Well, the voltage does not lie because you can see that one glowing and you can see that one glowing and you can see that these are dark. Uh, where is the three volt one? So that one's glowing nice and bright. That one's glowing. You cannot see these with your eye. Where is... Yeah, the three volt one is right there. Okay, that's one of the 1U4s. And this is, what, the 3S4? So it... The voltage is not lying, but I think if I pull these out, those will go dark. Let me try it. And no, they do not. I pulled the 3S4 out. You can see it was right there. And no, they do not go dark. There's the 3S4. Wow. What is going on with this? Using a $2,500 a photo multiplier tube to look at a 10 cent radio. This makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yeah, what is up with this? But yeah, you cannot see these without the photo multiplier tube. Okay, there might have been a development. I had to start thinking about this differently. So, again, that's a selenium rectifier, goes through 130 ohm, that's for sand resistor. Then we have a 950 ohm and another 950, and I'm pretty sure I checked those. So there's 45 volts on the connection between the 130 and the 950. And then there's 2 volts in between those two. And that should be 54 volts. So where is that going? And I tried pulling the tube out. Oh God, am I being stupid? Is this 20 microfarad shorted? Uh, I tried pulling this tube out, which takes that filament out of, out of the load, but why is that so low? Why is, why is it so low in the middle between the two? See, it's 45 volts here. And then this is the resistor right here. And then it's 45 volts here. And then it's 2 volts here. 2 volts. Yeah, I, I think maybe I'm being wasting a bunch of time and being a total idiot. You know, I should. I usually, and you got to do it, is cut the old electrolytic out. But I didn't do it because I didn't think it was shorted. I just wanted to kind of test the radio and then what I was going to do is gut the electrolytic and put these on the inside just to make it simple. So yeah I'm trying to force 10 volts onto this that line um, that center line through the current limiting light bulb and it's I'm gonna guess it's the electrolytic so I'm gonna try and cut it try and snip it off. Well that was a costly mistake. Didn't want to cut very easy. Well, 
that did not fix it and and that was a uh, I cut it this is much heavier duty but these are still like 15 bucks for these x light ones so what the hell is it the only other thing that thing supplies is this do we have a shorted tube here or is the 1R5 not compatible with the 1L6? Let me pull this out. And I pull the 1R5 out and the short goes away. So it was not the capacitor. It's something either in this tube is shorted or this tube is just not compatible somehow with this. But I can't believe that the internet says it's compatible. I got another 1R5, it's the same thing. Simply replace 1L6 with a 1R5. Nope, internet, Google, you're full of it. You're wrong, Google. But to be fair, I've done this before on a Transoceanic and it works. So, something must be different about the way it's used in this radio so on the left is the 1L6 on the right is the 1R5 and I see exactly what's going on here uh, the 1R5 has pin 5 which has B plus on it in this radio tied right to the filament and the 1L6 does not so there must be something different in the the transoceanic that allows the 1R5 to work. Like I said, I've used it before in a transoceanic. So, wow. Uh, boy, did I waste a bunch of time. Now what I could do is I could go back and edit that all out and make myself look good. I could just edit it out and go right back to the beginning and recut a new cut and say, you know... The internet says that a 1R5 will work in place of a 1L6, but in this specific radio it will not because of the way the circuit's designed. But I'm not going to because that's not the way I roll, and I'm sorry I wasted everybody's time, but this is the stuff you run into when you work on things like this, and you assume stuff, and you know you end up punishing yourself by breaking your tools, and cutting capacitor leads that don't need to be cut and all kinds of other stuff countless hours i've wasted on this so i gotta either come up with a 1l6 or maybe the 1la6 the 1l6 adapter although that's not going to work in here so i don't know i don't know i have to think about this so see how they have this configured they have 54 volts on pin 5, which on the 1R5, pin 5 is internally connected to pin 1. So no wonder why, and I should have caught on much earlier when I said I pulled the tube out and the, the current limiting light bulb got dimmer. I should have caught on that something was up there, but yeah, I've been riding this, I've been riding the short bus in the slow lane to Walmart today, for sure. I did it. Oh, did I do it. I borrowed a 1L6. See that? Look at that logo right there. That's sweet or what? Well, let's try it. I gotta be careful. Measuring the filament voltage on the 1L6. I'll start with the 6 watt bulb. Well, that's a little better. At least there's something there now. Uh, let's go up to the 11 watt bulb. And then I gotta start checking it on all the other ones too. Okay, 246 millivolts. Now on the audio output, we got 240 uh, on both sections. 
Let's try the two that were extra hot before. Wow, those are still kind of hot. 386. So they're 100 millivolts more than the other ones. I'm going to go up to the 25 watt bulb. It's definitely better. I'm going to try hitting bypass for a minute. I wonder why it's humming. It's got all new filters in it. It was my first time ever in Hawaii, so that was my first experience of Hawaii. Mind you, I don't think about it. Remember the antenna's broken, but there it is, it's working. Oh, maybe it's humming because I got a bunch of these capacitors cut out of circuit. Let's see, where's KNX? Cutting technology and unmistakable presence. We'll start a different course in the BMW X3. The style and powerful all-terrain versatility, there's no limit to your adventure. Find your ultimate BMW X3 or X5 at the Road Home Sales Event. BMW. Boy, a whole bunch of time wasted on the internet and my belief that because it worked in one radio, it would work in another. El stupido. There's the antenna coil, if you were curious. If the uh, uh, blame is directed against Israel, against the victim that is returning uh, fire with the, the most judicious use. Because SSME... Why is there so much hum? I definitely want to make sure that the point is not lost. Here in the community. Yeah, I don't know. I find out why the the so much hum. Well, I think I just blew the one L six up. I moved this tube around, and I saw a flash in there, and that was it. And now there's smoke pouring out of it. Well, luckily it did not blow up the one L six or the three V four. But it fried both uh, 1U4s and the 1S5. So I think we're done here. Uh, you saw it resurrected. As I said from the very beginning, these filaments are extremely, extremely delicate. Um, yeah, I, I'm done. I'm done. This is real world diagnostics. Re this is what... This is not edited. This is not sugar-coated. Obviously, when I turned the radio over, because I was going to get a shot of all the tubes illuminated with the night vision, something touched underneath. So I bumped something, and that was it. It over-volted the filaments and pop. So, three tubes blown up instantly. So, well, just... Because I was curious if it hurt the 1L6, I went and grabbed more tubes, the three that were blown up. And it appears it did hurt the 1L6 because even though the filament's still good, it must have boiled off enough of the coating to where it 
won't oscillate now because all I get is the hum. So, wow, that was an expensive mistake. Just a, a, a flash in time, a few seconds. And I don't know, something touched under here. But, yeah. Wow. Pretty depressing. 100 bucks between the pliers and the tube. $100 resurrection. This was kind of my most costly yet. But I, I knew from the beginning these tubes are delicate. Alright, so all of a sudden it started working, but here's what they look like. That's the 1L6 right there. And that's what they look like to the naked eye. Not giving up too easy, but also knowing when to quit. I want to spend a few more minutes with this. Because this is just really real world diagnosis and, you know, repair and resurrection. Sometimes it doesn't go smoothly. So I found the 1LA6 to 1L6 adapter, which is actually... There was a guy making these, but this is actually pretty simple. Um, so pin 7 of the small tube connects to pin 8 of the Loctal, and then it's just followed straight around. Pin 1 connects to pin 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3, all the way up to 7, which is skipped. So this is the 1L6 to 1LA6 adapter. So let's test the 1L6 we flashed on the TV7. Which this, this is actually a very versatile, accurate tube tester. So we'll do 1.1 volts. Nothing. Nothing. Really? Did I really like destroy it that hard? I mean, it kind of works in the radio. It just the filament voltage has to come up. Let's try the one LA six. Yeah, the one LA six works. All you need is fourteen on this guy, and it's good. So yeah, unfortunately, the one L six did get cremated. Uh, it didn't blow the filament open, but the quick flash really, really damaged it. Let's go up to 2 volts. Yeah, there it comes. 1.5. So now it's, now it's working. 1.1. Well, hell, what's up? Now it's working just as good as the 1LA6. Maybe it didn't hurt it. I don't know. I'm confused. I need therapy. So, unfortunately, this is not going to make it. Maybe I could get a standoff, but the standoff will add a bunch of capacitance and stuff and lead length. Okay, what's going on here is this is a little finicky in the socket. That's what's going on here. So yeah, it seems okay. Alright, good. What happened here is when I set it down last night, the lead from the sand resistor bumped the lead to the filaments. So it dumped basically line voltage directly into the filaments well through the resistor but still smoked and then again this is another proof that all rules of war have been broken in Gaza. in los angeles this morning officials announced that a closed stretch of i-10 in downtown la will be fully open tomorrow meanwhile police are asking for the public's help identifying a man they believe is connected 
to last week's arson fire that forced the closure of the busy highway. More from CBS News Los Angeles reporter Nicole Comstock. Cal Fire is releasing a photo of the man who they say may have started the fire intentionally. While we do have photo e uh, evidence of this individual, while we have some other evidence uh, that links the person to the fire itself, we're still looking to figure out uh, exactly who the person is. Daniel Berlands is a state fire marshal. He says at this point, Cal Fire is calling this guy a person of interest. A failure for SpaceX yesterday in its second attempt... Now, I guess if I say that that freeway fire is being used by the governor for potential presidential aspirations, it, uh, I'll, be, I'll be yelled at in all caps for saying something political on my channel, but it, it's just a fact. I mean, that's what's going on. The governor got highly involved in a very local issue and basically fixed this thing in record time and he's been at every news conference and he's been all over the place with it so yeah take a guess on what's going on there anyway that's the 1LA6 um and yeah there's a there's a lot of people standing by in the wings waiting to see what happens to the two front running corpses or the, at least the one corpse candidate but uh, all right go ahead yell at me in the comments for whatever uh that's the standoff it seems to work at least on knx and this tube does seem to work better than the other 1l6 so a great day in our city and i think it is a wonderful example of how and why we got this job done. First and foremost, the workforce that worked 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the numbers of workers on the site here who doubled and tripled as everyone came together, but showing the unity See? from the White House to the governor, yep. all of us standing together to make sure that this got done. The damaged part of the freeway. All of us standing together to make sure we look good and further our interests and fatten our wallets. Let's go back to the 1L6. Unfortunately, I think it was damaged. Even though it doesn't test damaged. I think it was damaged. Expensive mistake. See, it doesn't start. Oh, there it goes. Tom Brady in the football Americano. Yeah, the hum is weird. I need to... The voltage is a little bit low on the filament right now, but why is it humming with all new filters? Hear the phone interfering. If I add... Another 56 there, it, it definitely reduces it, and that's the only place that it reduces it if I add kind of interesting. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got all the electrolytics right. They're all grounded to the original capacitor. Um, this is the right ground. There is a chassis ground and then a, a voltage ground, a B-plus ground. That's why the capacitor is in a cardboard can. So I don't know, maybe I'll, get, maybe I'll go get a bigger capacitor. I'm looking at the schematic here and it says something interesting. Uh, 
use only Zenith non-inductive electrolytic condenser for replacement if any other type of electrolytic is used it will be necessary to add parts shown within the dotted lines so what I'm going to do is I'll show you these parts within the dotted line but I certainly don't think these would cause this humming so right here this dotted line and you would add a 0.05 there and this dotted line here and you would add a 0.05 here that may help with some of the whistling that we heard and birdies and stuff but I don't think the humming so that's interesting Zenith non-inductive filter condenser watch this okay I'm measuring the filament voltage across the 1L6 converter tube and the maximum is 1.4 I'm gonna jump the selenium with just a, a diode, a rectifier, silicon diode. Watch this. So we're at one volt now, right? Here we go. Way too much. That's why if you go to this, this resistor has to be adjusted. I don't understand. I have got perfect ESR here on all these capacitors and I'm checking all the grounds and I got everything connected to the right spot and I still have this evil hum. Why? The hum is definitely definitely a filter issue. Well, maybe I'll try grounding the I'll try grounding the grid of the audio output tube. It's the other thing, after you let it cool off, the voltage comes up high enough to where the, it works. Oh yes. Crank it, baby. Crank it. Guess it couldn't handle it. The oscillator stalled out. The 1L6 I fried. And actually that hum appears to be coming in. Into the grid of the audio output tube. I don't know. I'm out of ideas on this. Let's try this. 3,900 microfarads at 400 volts. It's taking that one a bit of time to charge up, isn't it? 4. Voltage is still coming up here. Alright, here we go. Bypass. <laughs> it's taken forever to charge that up. Did it get rid of the hum? It certainly did. I mean, that proves it's a filtering issue. that totally gets rid of the hum we got our big capacitor there I don't know what got damaged when I let those things short out besides the tubes but the filament voltage is too low for the uh, oscillator to start probably because the tube is weak now and the voltage is too low so We'll take a big ass rheostat and put it in parallel with the sand resistor. Now this is the same thing you would do if you were going to a silicon diode except you'd put it in series. And we'll crank this up until we get until we get up around I don't know
the oscillator will start at some point here. You could technically go up to like 1.4, but I mean, you could technically go up that high, but you don't really need to. You could probably stay around 1.2. And then you have this to listen to. Hum free. Pay reparations. He's almost completely empty now, says the BBC's Mark Lowen in Jerusalem. Gaza's largest hospital has been emptying, with hundreds sheltering there fleeing south. Among them are the premature babies left without incubators, now moved to Rafa to escape the war into which they were born. The babies will eventually be moved to Egypt. Russia launched several waves of drone attacks on the Ukrainian capital Kyiv overnight for the second night in a row, stepping up its assaults on the city after several weeks of pause. Ukraine's Air Force said its air defense systems destroyed 15 of the 20 kamikaze drones over Kyiv and two nearby regions. The beginning of Thanksgiving week in the east will be rainy and it will be a snowy holiday for some, says National Weather Service meteorologist Bob Orovec. The system that's going to be affecting the central to eastern United States over the next several days, mostly rain. <laughs> CBS News. You conduct virtual interviews all from one place. Started in the No skin whatsoever. By the way, if you did, then you They had a failed surgery in their spine or failed replacement in the knee. Keep going on your walk. And it's all about income. Out of lane, South 14, a good ride from the Antelope Valley. Speakers got a rattle in it. But I think this is about as much as we can do with this. I'm still stumped on the hum. That. I got those capacitor values right according to the schematic. I cannot see the actual can without removing it. Available in nearly 70% of the SBN league. So that's an option. Ramifications as a result of October 7. They keep people at their weakest moments. All of that noise is, well, it could be that this capacitor is left out here. But let's experiment with that real quick. It does not seem to get rid of it, so it's not the missing across the line capacitor. But this is a stellar performer. You can definitely tell that this would be an awesome DXer. Oh, 
that wakes up each day themselves, how do we get to the Super Bowl? How quickly do we get there? That should be Kogo out of San Diego. So, there you go. And, again, some of the... I know you have a little bit of a sore throat issue, so we're going to uh, hopefully that cough drop. Building some organizations in these key states, and so he's someone to, to watch for the future, I think. So if, all in all, not a bad move for him to have tried this because it preaches uh, that's for the gospel. Will be mostly sunny this afternoon. Highs around the low 70s. Winds a little stronger here along the coast. 10 to 20 mile per hour winds with gusts up to 35 miles per hour. Anaheim 63, San Fernando 63. I don't know why I need 5,000 microfarads on the line, though. I just. We talked about the new development, big development in the search for whoever set last weekend's fire to the 10 freeway. Authorities have released photos and a description. It's, it's of the relentless, man. It's relentless. Newsom for president, I'm telling you. I never thought so, but it sure seems like they're ramping it up, at least putting him in place. State Fire Marshal Daniel Berlant tells KCAL News. I want to talk a little bit about how the flood was catastrophic. Involved with college. There's the KMO chart. Yeah, this would be one hell of a DXer. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up, clean up my mess. Um, this was a fun one, and this is real world, real world resurrection. You can see the threshold here, the filament voltage threshold right where the oscillator starts. So that's 1.099 volts. So watch. There's a very, very tight threshold on these one volt tubes as to where they function and not function. Does this video just keep going to the point of annoyance or what? Unfortunately, I think this is about the only thing worth keeping out of this whole setup. The speaker has a rattle in it. The volume control is, I mean, this thing is just beat down. Maybe some of the coils. I don't know, I'll throw it in the parts bin, but yeah, it's pretty disappointing. But I guess most resurrections are. I think I'm going to make me a chain out of this. Then I'd be the envy of most every man.